Kicking off the list at number 10, Glow in the Dark Shark. Yeah, you thought Left Shark was the coolest fish in the pond? Think again, pal. Glow in the Dark Sharks, apparently we got them. Terrifying. Two years ago, scientists were able to identify three deep sea sharks. The kite fin, the black belly lantern, and the southern lantern shark. All three of them look like they're from Pandora. They're glowing. They're literally glowing. Bioluminescence is fascinating. We mentioned the deep sea angler fish in part one of this list. So now we've got glowy gill Gary over here to worry about. Awesome, I'm never swimming again. These sharks were found in the twilight zone, around 1,000 meters deep off the coast of New Zealand. Yep, never swimming again, ever again. Let's move on. Number nine, giant phantom jellyfish. Beautiful, yes. Terrifying and for sure an alien, also yes. This beast was discovered back in 2021 in, you guessed it, Monterey Bay. The classic spot, apparently, for sea monsters. The research team sent in a deep sea robot to take a look into the abyss, and they discovered this phantom giant jellyfish again. Yeah, I said again. Originally, this jellyfish was documented back in 1899, living at depths of 3,000 to 13,000 feet. It's, yeah, more than fair. She's hard to catch. Who is she down there? Never know. But luckily, we got a video of her in action last year. Check it out. This is why I don't ever go in the oceans, ever. Cheers. Number eight. Deep sea anglerfish. These guys are so scary, we have to talk about them. Living at depths of over 6,000 feet, the deep sea anglerfish lives in complete darkness. Like Vin Diesel in pitch black. It was first discovered back in 1833 when it washed ashore in Greenland and was then taken to Johann Christopher Hangman Reinhardt in Denmark. It was first referred to as the football fish or the man gobbler. Great names, okay. Female anglerfish have a glowing lure at the top of their head. That's how we recognize them. It's like the whoop thing, right, in Finding Nemo. It's scary and it's something I'm glad hides at the bottom of our oceans, but it's needed for their survival. The light is created due to bioluminescent bacteria. Thousands of fish have it, and in the deep sea, anglerfish uses it to hunt. It draws fish in right in front of its massive, scary mouth, and then just, hum. They see the disco light, and then moments later, they see another light, the light of the fish lords. The spiny dorsal fin hangs over their head. It's called an esca, it's an organ, and it emits photophore light. It's main method of hunting, which is pretty badass. It kind of has to be because it has no arms or anything. It's just a big scary face moving around the ocean. And as for prey, well, she'll take what she can get, no matter how big. Well, he ate it head first, because this thing probably came in to look at the light that the anglerfish has, and then the anglerfish grabbed it and then sort of swallowed it in its stomach has expanded to sort of fit it all in. The deep sea anglerfish can expand their jaw and stomach and they can eat prey that's twice the size of them. Although they often eat shrimps, snails, and other smaller fish. But once you're in, you're tucked. You're not going anywhere. You're screwed. The males actually aren't equipped with the natural lure of light. And when they reach adulthood, their digestive system no longer functions. So it needs one of these leading ladies to survive. I'll let that speak for itself. Number seven, old coral reefs or dying coral reefs, this one's actually kind of sad. After all, the list is dark discoveries. These are all scary or dark, literal darkness for some of them. Back in 2009, after a four week expedition to explore the deep ocean, just southwest of Tasmania, scientists found deep water coral reefs, which is exciting at first until they realized that these coral reefs are dying. They're on their way out. So now there needs to be more research done into why exactly these reefs are dying. We would like to know that. That's kind of something we're working on currently. If the reason they're dying happens to extend to the shallow reefs as well, this could cause massive problems for both marine life and us, our human life. Scientists need to figure out whether the coral was dying because of the ocean warming up, maybe it was disease, or perhaps it was an increase in ocean acidity. Whatever the case is, if it extends into shallower water, it's bad news for us. 25% of marine life would lose their habitat. The coastal fishing industry would be affected, of course, so no more fish and chip specials. Save the ocean, you know? For red lobster's sake, let's smarten up and save the ocean. Number six, Chuck Lagoon. This lagoon was Japan's main base during the war, but come 1944, the United States launched an attack, which some deem as Japan's Pearl Harbor, where 60 ships were sunk and around 250 planes as well. So for 70 years, there's been a massive graveyard, literally, just sitting in the depths of the Pacific, and it wasn't until recently where we got a good look at these haunting artifacts from history. This photographer went down, took some photos, and said it was one of the scariest shoots ever. They described the atmosphere filled, of course, with, you know, human skulls, remains, gas masks, bullets. Obviously, it was haunting to look at. Nobody wanted to go down, so that's when we send in a submarine. That's when we send in a drone, because we don't like to look at skulls and picking up stuff out of the sand. We don't like to do that. Nobody was expecting these artifacts to be that well-preserved after all this time, too. Like, all these things, even a mammoth tusk, these are all in pristine condition, almost. It's like the ocean's haunting and unexplored. Hmm. Number five, holes. If you have trypophobia, you may want to skip this one. 
or face your fears together. I don't like holes either. I'm diving in. Let's do it. Off the coast of Big Sur, California, which is a real place and not just a Mac update, a survey revealed about 15,000 holes on the bottom of the ocean, and they're all the same size, which is weird. They all measure up to be 11 meters wide and one meter deep. The team at Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute our, our friends, they found about 15,000 of these and then they found 5,000 more that were even bigger. The little guys are micro depressions in the earth and the big ones are pockmarks. Initially, scientists here thought that it was methane underneath the seafloor coming out to say hi and you know, leaving a big crater, big poof. So rovers went down there, tests were done, no methane. In fact, there hasn't even been any methane for 50,000 years. So what's going on here? These craters are doing a pretty good job with the ecosystem though, wildly, because now there's deep sea creatures just living in them. They even found a whale skull just laying in one. Imagine being a crab, coming home to that, I throw up. I go, a little bubble of puke in the ocean. Number four, MV Derbyshire. This ship was twice the size of the Titanic, but James Cameron didn't make a movie about it, so you may not have heard about it. Let me fill you in. I'm not James Cameron, but I'll do my best. The MV Derbyshire was the biggest British registered merchant ship of all time to sink. That's an odd brag when you think about it. But she was assembled back in 1976 and lost in 1980 en route from Canada to Japan. A Mayday distress call was never issued and the ship was following proper ocean routes with weather routing companies, so they were doing all the right things, yet somehow it sank. September 15th, 1980, a search began for the missing ship and crew, but six days later, the search was called off. Nothing was found, not even a clue, honestly. The ship was declared lost. The sister ship of the Derbyshire ended up sinking as well due to a deck cracking, so the families urged officials to search again. Come 1994, the Derbyshire was found. Number three, a huge squid. I'll talk about this thing every chance I get. I hope you haven't seen or heard about this because I slept a lot better the less I knew, honestly. The big fin squid, the BFS, the big squid, is rarely seen, hence why it's on our list here today. It actually lurks in many oceans, hiding in the deep. The big fin squid lives in the permanent dark zones of the ocean around 1,200 meters or 4,000 feet deep in the sea. So the guy can't see anything. He's blind down there, as are most of these monsters. On November 11th, 2007, an ROV was searching around the deepest, darkest waters in the Gulf of Mexico, and lucky for us, they got one on film. Yeah, 23 feet long. I know you're probably wondering as soon as you saw that video. Depth perception is like, oh, maybe it's small, maybe it's this. Nope, stupidly large. They look like balloons, scary, haunting balloons, just casually floating, watching you. I hate how calm it looks too. It looks like it locked onto you, like it's like kinda following your moves. Is this a boss battle? This feels like a boss battle. Let's move on, this guy's scary. Number two, Siphonophore. Siphonophores, okay, where do I even begin? This is a real thing, not an alien? Okay, cool. Upon first glance, this appears to be a single multicellular organism, but they're actually an entire colony of polyps and medusoids that are collectively known as a zooid. Yep, I'm saying real words, I'm not just making them up. A few years ago, scientists found the longest siphonophore ever. They found it and it was 154 feet long. You thought that last creature was long. This thing is stupid. Just a huge long piece of spaghetti just floating around in the ocean. But really, it's, it's actually not spaghetti. It's a bunch of different little creatures all working together. Reading up about this thing, there was a quote that I read and it said, we at least need to know what's down there. No, we don't. Leave it alone. Leave everything, this, leave it alone down there. I can't even deal with a spider in the apartment. Where do I even begin with this? And finally, number one, an ancient city. We'll end this list with a recent, recent discovery. The lost Egyptian city of Heraklion was found after disappearing under the Mediterranean Sea 1200 years ago. Now this city has a bit of history behind it, you know, being founded in the eighth century BC and all. And researchers believe Heraklion was the port that you'd arrive in if you were to travel back then. Well recently, last summer in 2021, more to this ancient sunken city was found in Egypt. And it's changing history, dare I say. This was led by the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, this sunken military vessel, this 25 meter ship was found in this sunken ancient city. In another part of this lost city, remains of a Greek funerary area was also discovered, dating back to around the 4th century BC. So this discovery connects the historical dots for us. Greek merchants living in the ancient Egyptian city. This tells us that the Greeks settled here during the late Pharaoh dynasties, which is wild. We're literally just connecting all these pieces of this historical puzzle. And also we're finding treasure at the same time, so it's not all scary fish. We just need to send cameras and submarines underwater everywhere and just check under every shell. 
What a wild list this was. Kicking off the list at number 10, SS Garisopa. We'll kick off this deep sea part three with a shipwreck. Whenever it comes to underwater stuff, I think I have thalassophobia. These were hard to look at and look into, rather. I got chills looking at these photos, honestly. The SS Garisopa was once a thriving British cargo ship. Back in 1941, during World War II, the cargo ship was en route, returning from India carrying a pretty nice amount of silver. It was a lot of silver, an, an alarming amount of silver. A storm rolled in, so the captain made a quick decision knowing what was on board to avoid the rough waters as much as possible. So the ship changed direction and started heading towards Ireland. Again, this was 1941 during World War II, so not a great time to head that direction. The ship was spotted by a German plane and a U-boat later claimed the lives of the SS Garisopa's 85 passengers. News traveled quickly and once the war came to an end, a few divers checked out the area. There was nothing. Now fast forward to 2011, Odyssey Marines team found the ship. 14,000 feet below the surface, surrounded by just pure darkness. The team kept around 80% of the treasure found and the rest went to Her Majesty's treasury. In case you were wondering, there was around $150 million worth of treasure found. Yeah, if you can do it, then go grab it. Sure, it's like one of those things where someone's like, hey, you want $150 million, go into this deep, dark, scary thing. Would you do it? No, my answer is no. Number nine, venomous sea snakes. Last year in the deep waters off Australia's coast, of course it's Australia, always Australia, a sea snake that was once thought to be extinct has been rediscovered. How fun. He's like, ah, psych, you thought. Just when you thought the ocean couldn't get even more dangerous, now we got new sea snakes to worry about. The short-nosed sea snake hasn't been seen in 23 years, and they would often live near Ashmore Reef. But last year, divers found one 67 meters below the surface in the twilight zone, which is pretty wild. Just lurking in the dark, just hanging out, meditating. The Australian Institute of Marine Science is responsible for this discovery, and the team calls this a second chance to protect and further understand the species. And an up-close personal encounter is brought to life from this diver. Apparently, this happens from time to time before major storms. Snakes can sense an oncoming storm, so what they try and do is latch onto something heading in the direction towards shore. So they don't have to burn energy and they can just grab onto like a barrel or something and then just, you know, make its way there. Pretty smart. So this diver was exploring, nothing was going crazy or anything like that, and then he felt a snake wrap onto his leg because he felt a storm was coming in. The diver didn't even know that a storm was coming. The snake did, and he wrapped its snake self around his leg. As soon as I was in the shallows, it uncurled and headed up the beach where it hid under a breadfruit tree. That was from a diver named Specialist Celery. Great name, also terrifying experience. I don't like snakes in water or on land. Next, number eight, surprise tiger shark. Yeah, not something you wanna see diving in the deep, a tiger shark. A glowing shark, left shark, I don't care. I want none of the shark smoke. This deep sea discovery comes from user Stormcutter Sick name, a little bit better of a diver name. They say, I know a guy who was out diving for crayfish and lobster by the ocean. Also, the I know a guy trick, it was totally you. Don't lie to us. Crayfish often hide under the rocks, so as he was diving, a tiger shark emerged from a cave and rammed him, breaking his arm and ribs. <laughs> this guy got shucked by a shark, that's insane. He said the shark was testing him out. Yeah, I'd say. That's pretty sweet, man. I'm glad you survived, honestly. I bet you couldn't wait to tell people what happened. You're like, oh, my ribs? Yeah, I got sideswiped by a tiger shark. Yeah, he's feeling testy. You know how tiger sharks do. If you're wondering what that experience may have looked like, uh, this is footage of a rare tiger shark in New Zealand lurking in the deep. Number seven, Humpback Mama. This deep dive happened about a year ago. A diver named Sidetrack38, that's their username, not their legal name, although that would be pretty sweet. Sidetrack38, he's like, what's up? They were exploring the ocean one afternoon when all of a sudden they got charged by a mother humpback whale. The divers shared their experience online, saying, her curious calf had swam around us and we were between her and the calf. Two of us never even saw her coming. We were watching the baby, but our third diver, saw her come. She kicked down and swam under us last minute. We didn't see anything until that 60 foot freight train passed just underneath us. Whales are beautiful. They're beautiful but terrifying creatures, my friend. Glad you didn't get a broken rib or back in this case because whales, they like to go pretty deep. Just a view. Just trying to figure us Incredible. out. Incredible. Yeah, this is amazing. Justin, you want the reds off? <laughs> Look at that view. I hope we're getting screen captures of this. Number six, Mako Shark. Mako sharks are one of the fastest sharks in the world. I'll start by saying that. Just get that fact in your head. Given this list so far, I would also start sweating if I were you. This is a scary one. This deep dive horror story comes from username One Dumb Diver. Great name. They clearly made this account just to share this occasion. So let's dive in. 
Nowadays, we dive with shark shields, which emit electronic pulses that freak the sharks out and keep them away. But back then, what we used was essentially a chainmail sleeve. The idea being that sharks hate the taste of metal, so if you give it your arm, it'll bite down, decide you're gross, and then move along. So I wait, it comes over, and I make a perfect move to give it my arm. However, just before the crunch, the crunch, it occurred to me that I had left my sleeve on my bed. Now I had a huge open gashing wound on my arm from the bite in open water and I trailed blood everywhere. Not an ideal scenario. So once the shock finally wore off, you realize that you're in salt water and salt and open wounds, they don't feel good. In a panic, I dropped my weight belt and shot up to the surface without any sort of waiting period. Not great. Because I hadn't been paying attention to the currents, I was approximately a quarter mile downstream of my boat, which meant that I had to swim back up to it. After getting bitten by a shark, imagine having to swim, that is a nightmare scenario. Glad you're okay. Also, you're not a dumb diver. You're just, you're experiencing the things. You're figuring it out. You're doing great. You're brave. I don't even like going in lakes. Number five, more sea snakes. Coming from Patrick667, about a year ago as well, they posted, so three days ago, I went snorkeling off Mimba Island in Zanzibar. Everything went normal and we started heading back. So I grabbed my net and I put my black fins, my black mask, snorkel and black wetsuit inside. Once back ashore, I grab my bag, jump off the boat and head to the rental office to return said equipment. At that point, I feel my bag is moving somehow. At first look, it seemed like a flat black worm squirming quickly. After rotating the bag, I realized I was looking at only the tail of a one meter long black sea snake, one of the most venomous reptiles ever, trying to get out of the net, like in the lobby. How it got there, I have no freaking clue. That is a nightmare scenario. Imagine being like, thanks so much, I had a great time. Here's a sand dollar. <laughs> also, don't mind the venomous snake. Number four, the frilled shark. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this dinosaur, the frilled shark, just hanging out, just lurking about 870 meters below the surface. So if you're anywhere around there, watch out. This one looks like an eel almost. It's so scary looking, it's so slippery and quick. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long and they fight in the dark. They don't need to see to attack you, which is pretty terrifying considering all these deep dive stories are all in the pitch black. So unless you're a deep diver, you're not really gonna run into the frilled shark. Have you ever dealt with one of these? Are you a diver? Are you watching this because you're a diver? Please comment down below if you are. Comment some of your personal experiences. These were a nightmare to read. I couldn't even finish half of them. Everything is so dangerous and so fast underwater. Number three, snapping shrimp. This little guy can literally create a sonic boom as it attacks you, that's how fast it is. You won't see him coming, and neither did this diver. Here's a clip of a mantis shrimp punching through a diver's gear. Yeah, right through their water shoes. Bam! Ah. Ow, that really hurt. They're so quick, oh my God, they're tiny, but they, they really hit. They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs, these little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers per hour. And in doing so, a large air bubble is created and because this you know, Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the left hook, the following pop is around 200 decibels. The sound alone can stun its prey and if they're lucky, it sometimes kills them. That's how you wanna go out. You don't wanna go out with one of these Superman punches to the neck. Number two, comb stars. Ocean life is by far the scariest thing out there. We have no idea what's in our oceans. We discover some crazy shit every year. Some deep sea fish with bioluminescence are for sure aliens, while others are just natural predators. That looks scary. Like the comb star, for example. This guy was not in Finding Nemo. He would have been a weird addition. A comb star is a starfish that contains tetrodoxin, which is this deadly neurotoxin that can cause paralysis. Yeah, Finding Nemo, that movie would be over in eight minutes if this guy was there. Per every gram of comb star flesh, there's enough toxin to take out 500 mice. So if you have a mice problem, Honestly, you can call one guy. It's a very specific weird call, but I know how you can do it. A little bit of textrodoxin. Tetrodoxin? Tecrodoxin. That's what it's called. And finally, coming in at number one, the electric eel. Awesome. That's the worst thing I've ever seen. Great. The moray eel, first of all, don't do what he just did. Don't go up to a random eel and start rubbing it like it's a genie lamp. That's not smart. It's not a great dame. You don't want to do that. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off in like two seconds. But you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. Yeah, just like that MGMT song that's now stuck in our heads. As its name suggests, there's types of eels that can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti, appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery. This eel can release a shock up to 860 volts, which is more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. 
A swimming wall plug that gets hungry. Nice, we love nature. I'm never swimming again. Kicking off our list at number 10, a mammoth tusk. Scientists are currently trying to bring the woolly mammoth back to life, so it's fitting that we throw this recent discovery on our list here. Back in 2019, scientists from Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, they were poking around the ocean floor. They were poking around 10,000 feet, not too far off the coast of California, and they found what they thought was an elephant tusk. Now that by itself would be a pretty neat discovery. Animal remains in the deep sea, let's go, that's great. No, this one was even better. We found a mammoth tusk. At first, the team only grabbed a small sample, but Last year, in July, they were able to return and get the entire thing. Voila! It belonged to a Colombian mammoth. Those were mammoths that didn't have a lot of hair. They didn't need it. They lived in North America, so things got a little warm sometimes. 10,000 years after they died off, we're still finding their tusks. What do you think about bringing them back to life? Should we do that? Sound off below. I, I say no. Definitely not. They're way too big and scary. Also, they died before. They'll probably die again. Sorry, I don't know. Number nine. The frilled shark. Another scary shark, awesome. Back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this dinosaur, the frilled shark, if you wanna call it a shark, okay. It was lurking about 870 meters below the surface. This one looks like an eel, almost. It's so scary looking. Oh, I hate this, I hate the ocean. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long and they fight like daredevil. They can hunt in complete darkness. They don't need to see anything to whoop your ass. Remember that next time you're uh, skinny dipping. Mm -hmm. Unless you can hold your breath for a seriously long time, you won't run into the frilled shark anytime soon. They're only found about a mile below the surface, so sleep swimmingly tonight. Number eight, black dragonfish. All of these fish are so scary looking, and no, not all of these things are fish. Just a few off the hop, because ooh, get them out of the way. The black dragonfish is the first time scientists have found an ultra black deep sea fish. This thing is awesome, I love this. The black dragonfish literally has the word dragon in it, and I'm not surprised. He fits it, he fits the picture. These little guys can be found at depths of 1600 feet, and you'll see this one coming towards you, as these fish too possess bioluminescence. If you can't tell from these photos, um, they also have teeth. They have big, scary, dragon-like teeth. Even Khaleesi would see this and be like, no, no, I'm good. Number seven, Apollo 11. They say space and the ocean are pretty similar, but nobody expected to find this. The engines of the Saturn V rocket that fell off during the Apollo 11 missions. They should have never been found, realistically. The odds here are just mind-blowing. Right off coastal Florida waters found 16,000 feet below the ocean surface. These things are massive. They're so heavy we could barely get them out of the sea. You know who found this thing laying on the ocean floor for more than 40 years? Jeff Bezos. Yep, Amazon CEO Jeffrey Bezos. J bees. He found this. He found these back in 2012. What's the shipping fee for a couple of Apollo 11 rockets? It's probably not cheap. Number six, USS Johnson. Once a US Navy destroyer, the USS Johnson sank during the Battle of Samar back in 1944. It sank after a battle with a large fleet of Japanese warships. Victor Vescavo, one of the few to reach the Marianas Trench, was the first one to stumble upon the remains of this sunken warship. The remains were found quite recently, back in 2019, and it's now known as the deepest known shipwreck of all time, which is a weird brag. She was found 6,450 meters deep in the Philippine Sea in the Pacific Ocean. To quote Victor, who at the time was leading said expedition, he says, the wreck is so deep that there's very little oxygen down there. And while there is a little bit of contamination from marine life, it's remarkably well intact, except for the damage it took from the furious fight, end quote. The ship is so deep that it took them a handful of trips just to locate the thing entirely. There were 327 crew members on board the ship during the battle, and sadly, only 141 of them survived. The diving team was respectful about their mission, and they laid wreaths both before and after their dives, which is just a nice thing to note off at this point, honestly. Number five. Underwater civilization. As we found out in part one of this series, the ocean, being mostly undiscovered, is terrifying. Yep, never going in it again, for sure. But discovering a long lost civilization underwater, okay, I'll admit, that's not scary. That's actually kind of cool. It's pretty neat, we like those. Found 65 feet below sea level off the coast of Sweden. Researchers from Lund University found a Stone Age civilization that dates to around 9,000 years old. They found artifacts that are in great condition, all things considered. They even found an elk antler ax. How epic is that? That's some Elder Rings kind of stuff right there. That's some good loot. Some of these discoveries, they still have to work out. They're not even sure what they found. What researchers do know is that this ancient civilization, they had a healthy life based on what they found. There's lots of food, findings suggest that it was warm out often. It was great and all, you know, until the sea rose up and swallowed the Swedish lagoon. The forest surrounded lagoon just ceased to exist, and we're not really sure why. The more ocean we discover, the more we learn about our past. And if we can also find treasure along the way, that would, that would be helpful, that'd be great. Number four, 
USS Nevada. The USS Nevada was lost in 1948 and it wasn't until a year ago where she was seen again. Yeah. The USS Nevada was referred to as the unsinkable ship and here's why. During the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor, the USS Nevada was the only battleship to get away in one piece. But Barely. It took years of repairs after that, but she returned to battle later in 1944 to support the Normandy invasion. A year later, it assisted in two atomic bomb tests, and post-World War II, she was finally deemed too ancient for service. So the Navy used the USS Nevada as target practice, and it took them five days and lots of power to finally sink it. How impressive is that? They almost couldn't sink the ship when they tried. That's kind of brilliant. The torpedo was the final strike, and after it sank, the Navy wasn't even sure where exactly it ended up. It was more than 15,000 feet below the surface, so it could have gone literally anywhere. Cut to only a couple years ago, a joint expedition by Ocean Infinity and Search Inc. led by Dr. James Delgado, they found her. Just 65 nautical miles southwest of Pearl Harbor. All the way down. Number three. Amelia Earhart's plane. Yeah, you heard me. How epic is this? The first woman to fly across the Atlantic, she was well on her way to settling even more groundbreaking records, but her plane tragically disappeared over the Pacific in 1937. It's since been a great mystery where the final resting place of Amelia Earhart now is, but we may have actually found her remains back in 1940 on the Pacific island of Nikamuraro. The initial examination of these remains were reported to be of that of a man. That was the general idea in 1941. But come 2018, we have a different idea now. Now, something's come up. Researcher Richard Jantz took another look at the long lost remains, and since then, photos of Amelia have surfaced, so Richard compared the bone measurements to her body type, and we're pretty sure that's her. But in a recent discovery, May 2021, a murky image went viral, and many believe it's Amelia Earhart's plane submerged in Nikumaroru Lagoon. Back in 1991, part of a plane fuselage was recovered, but it was too damaged to confirm that it was her plane from when it went down in 1937. Do you think it's her? Sound off below. I. I do, definitely. Or else someone else's remains are out there and that's also wild. Let's discover who that is. Number two, crop circles. Before we end off this list, we'll get a little cute, dare I say. Crop circles on the ocean floor. Are these aliens, alien fish? Do we have this now? Is this a scary shark? What's going on here? These crop circles were first spotted back in 1995 off the southern coast of Japan. And for 16 years, these things were blowing the minds of divers or deep sea explorers. Nobody knew where they were coming from. They would be there one week and then the next day would be gone. Tiny aliens or tiny puffer fish. That's right, in 2011, one of these dudes got caught in 4K, and it's one of the weirdest things I have ever seen. I had to squeeze it in some sort of deep sea list. I love showing this little guy off. These male puffer fish, they try and lure in the ladies by making art. Some birds dance like crazy, some fish make art, okay? Animals have souls, deal with it. The thing that baffles me here, con concerns me, if anything, is that these puffer fish use a shell. They use a shell in their mouth, they, um, they grab it, and then they scoop out these designs. He uses a tool to carve away his emotions. Small but mighty, and also an artist. And finally, number one, Squid Graveyard. During a 2012 expedition in the Gulf of California, lurking all the way at the bottom of the seafloor, scientists came across a bunch of squid carcasses and squid egg sheets, which I mean, you know, in your working day, that's a lot to see, just going along and all of a sudden you're like, oh, yikes, okay. But anywho, once they took photos, they got footage, all was good, they returned. Come 2015 though, that's when these deep dives get a little mysterious. When they returned to the exact same area, they found even more carcasses and even more squid egg sheets. What's going on? Why here? Is this like a hot spot? So many questions. Many species of squid will see the adults all join in large groups and lay clusters of eggs in the seafloor, but shortly after this, many of the adults will die. Nature is cruel. This is the case for most things. But it's not the case for every squid, however. There are some mothers who instead lay their eggs on an egg sheet, which they keep in between their arms for months. And when the babies finally hatch, the mother will then drift her way down to the seafloor. So this answers why that squid died, but it doesn't answer why there's so many bodies and so many types of squid births and stuff happening in one specific zone. And that answer still remains a mystery, hence why it's our number one today. Kicking off the list at number 10, let's dive in. Ooh, Barracuda. Exploring the deep is dangerous if you're a diver, of course, not because of the deadly ocean life surrounding your every direction, but because if you come up too quickly, major health problems will follow. But if not that, probably a deadly Barracuda. Equally as scary. This deep discovery was made by user Arira95. I'm pulling real events for this one from real deep sea divers. We're going to the real content for this one. So buckle up. One time when my parents visited Mexico, they went diving and my mom was slightly lower than my dad looking at the ocean floor. My mom had on a gold necklace that was floating in the water around her and it was a sunny day and a fairly shallow dive at this point, so it was sparkling. My mom looked below at all the critters when my dad grabbed her and started frantically shaking her arm to get her attention. I'm sweating reading this. She looked up and a barracuda 
was directly in front of her, staring intently at that shiny necklace. She slowly moved up her hand to cover the necklace, and they slowly and calmly moved away from it, and it took off without bothering them anymore. But still pretty unsettling, and taught my mom to be a little more aware of her surroundings when she's diving. I mean, fair, but I mean, no one expects a barracuda. Also, if your mom wants to dive with chains on, that's pretty sick. You won't catch her slacking. Even in the depths of the sea, she's like, I'm ready. I don't care who shows up. I don't care who I bump into. Water shoes and bling. Check and check. Let's go diving. Number nine, Ram's Horn Squid. This little squishy dude was discovered around 3,000 feet below the surface and scientists cannot stop talking about the way he moves. Look at him, he looks like a really slow submarine, which is pretty amazing when you think about the uh, Schmitz Ocean ROV that's down there getting this footage. It's also a submarine, how funny is that? He's looking at him, he's looking at them. They're like, what? He's like, what? They're all just both wiggling, trying to balance each other out. His body acts like a submarine's ballast does. Fluids and gases shift around and in return, this little guy can float up and down whilst wiggling his toes. Look at him. I never thought a squid would be cute until now. Didn't know that was a possibility, yet here we are. Part three, most amazing, cute squid. Number eight, Catherine Sullivan. Not really a deep sea discovery, but I mean, when talking about all these discoveries, you gotta ask, who goes down there? Who does the thing, right? When an entertainer wins an Oscar, Emmy, Tony, and Grammy, we call that an EGOT. Fun little title only a handful of artists can claim. But what about somebody who's been to both space and the deepest part of our earth? What do we call them? Well, so far, them is just one individual. Her name's Catherine Sullivan, the former NASA astronaut decided to change up directions for this trip, so she joined Victor Viscavo on one of his eight trips to the deepest known point on Earth. July 7th, 2020, Catherine Sullivan officially became the first person to do both. Go out there and down there. That's crazy. Your Fitbit's like, what are you doing? What's happening? How many steps is this? What can we call this impressive title? He got a deep got? A deep got go-getter? A deep go-getter? Yeah, you're a deep go-getter. That sounds awful. We're doing our best here. Maybe part four will have a fun name. It's impressive. It's so impressive my ears hurt thinking about all these communities. Bravo, hats off to you. Number seven, holy grail of shipwrecks. Okay, back to shipwrecks. It's hard to read up on these shipwrecks sometimes, well all the time, because on one hand, it's fascinating to discover parts of our history we thought was once lost forever. Of course, we find tons of treasure that's always fun and noteworthy, but we're also exploring the scene of a horrible wreck every single time. It's quite grim, not on paper. In 1708, the San Jose Galleon was heading to Spain from Colombia, but when the British attacked, the San Jose sank to the ocean floor and nearly all 600 crew members lost their lives. Yeah. Dark history. In 2015, the ship was found with around 17 to 22 billion dollars worth of plundered valuables. See, back in the 80s, Gloka Mora Company claimed they had found the ship. Columbia was lacking the financial and technological resources to dive down and actually get it, so they agreed to give GMC 35% of the findings. In 1984, they then handed the rights over to an American company, Sea Search Armada. Then the game changed. Since then, and still to this day, legal battles have been unfolding over this lost treasure. COVID delayed it quite a bit, so if you can hold your breath for a really long time, it's still waiting there. No one knows what to do with it yet. I'm like, see ya, be right back. Number six, the Vasa shipwreck. Back in 1628, the Vasa sunk within 20 minutes of setting sail and it claimed the lives of 30 souls on board. How tragic is that? Only 20 minutes and it was gone. The Swedish Navy launched the ship August 10th, 1628 and it was once considered a high-tech warship, even referred to as spectacular. So what happened? How did this thing sink in 20 minutes? That's crazy. Well, the first rush of wind caught it off guard and it swayed a bit. The second rush of wind sank it. There's gotta be more. There was a crash around and everything to send it off, but the 64 bronze cannons that were installed during the rushed process of building the ship were too heavy. That's why it sank. And the lack of oxygen in the water allowed for its rediscovery to continue its story. The Vasa was built with carvings all around the wood. Carvings centered around the king at the time, King Gustav II. So when the wreck was rediscovered in 1961, 95% of the wood was still intact. So it still tells the story. Number five, under the ice. This dark discovery was pretty recent. Recent as in October, 2021, the Hakon Project is one I would never sign up for personally, but I'm surprised it's taken this long to do something along these lines. The Hagon Project is a group of around 30 scientists. They teamed up to send a deep sea robot 13,000 feet below the icy surface of the Arctic Ocean. This was the first time we got to see the hidden volcanic vents that have been hiding for centuries, because obviously it's that deep and that cold, and now we have the resources and people who are brave enough to go and camp out in the Arctic to go explore. That's crazy. Number four, ancient Greek shipwreck. I remember hearing about this back in 2018, so I'm excited I get to throw it on a list. The oldest shipwreck discovered in the Black Sea. It looks like it sank 50 years ago, but actually this ship is from 400 BC. It's an ancient Greek trading vessel and it's not very large, but somehow this thing is very mighty. 2,400 years later, over a mile below the surface, the lack of oxygen again actually preserved this ship. That's why it looks not ancient. John Adams, principal investigator with the Black Sea Marine Archaeology Project, describes the findings as something he 
you never thought was even possible. Yeah, more than fair. Not long ago, like we're still trying to figure out the pyramids. We're like, oh my God, this thing's just chilling there the whole time. Just a fish is staring at it. This discovery changed what we knew about seafaring in the ancient world. The oldest intact shipwreck known to mankind. That's not a bad title. Another 2000 years, we'll find nothing but plastic on the bottom of our oceans. Number three, underwater river. We've heard about this one at some point, I'm sure, but how is this even a real thing? How is this possible? What are we looking at? What is this? Back in 2016, researchers working in the Black Sea found these very strong currents. Currents of water flowing at the bottom of the sea, like its own river, almost. And this 115 foot deep river was on land instead of, well, under the Black Sea. It would be ranked number six in the world for the amount of volume alone that's constantly rushing through it. So pretty impressive. The river carries heavy sediments along the seafloor, hence why it makes those grooves over time. And yeah, over time, those currents carve out their own path, and now it's massive and extremely powerful and unstoppable. But luckily for us, you need a deep sea rover to take a good look, so you're not gonna fall in anytime soon. Number two, deep waste. I mentioned some deep sea plastic on this channel before, but this 2021 discovery is just a new low, pun intended. Right off the coast of LA, hiding around 4,000 feet below the ocean's surface, sitting there for quite a long time were literal barrels of garbage, just waste. The plume of evil coming off of these things also, it looks like a nuclear wasteland. Probably because it is a literal nuclear wasteland. How horrible is that? There weren't 30 or 40 of these barrels also, in case you're wondering, there were thousands. Around 27,000 were found. Two weeks of searching with subs. What a sad expedition that must have been. Oh my. These barrels were dropping into the ocean around 1947 to around 1961. That's the window of time. You'd think after barrel 5,000, somebody would be like, ah, this feels wrong. I don't know. And finally, number one, beneath a glacier. We had to end this part three on some new footage from the bottom of an Antarctic glacier. And this glacier also, in case you're wondering, is the size of Florida. So if you're imagining like a big ice cube, it's a bit bigger than that, just a little bit. This is like finding the bottom of a continent. This thing is massive. And we sent a rover underneath all of it. How scary is that? If it were to collapse, our sea levels would rise 10 feet, just to give you an idea of how big it is. And in 2019, researchers drilled 2,300 feet right through the Thwaites Glacier and dropped a robot with a camera down and then they just roamed around. And they saw this. Hold your breath. This is the first time we've ever seen the grounding zone of a massive glacier. There's only one meter of space between the bottom of the glacier and the rocky seafloor. Could you go down there? I don't think I could. I would swim underneath it and pretend like I'm lifting it up, you know? Just kidding. I wouldn't even get into the submarine to go down this hole. Not a chance. Also, can we not drill through a glacier the size of Florida? Just sounds like a bad idea. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe leave this project alone. Mm -hmm.